Say unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. You don't know, David was happy just to be back in church again. You don't know what David went through, but I, I get a glimpse of what David went through. When we had a COVID that stopped us. What the devil meant for evil, God can turn it around for your good. Bow with me and let us go to God as we open up this church service with our call to worship. And I'd like you to join me at the 27th number of Psalms, the first through the sixth, and we want to rest on our feet as we have our call to worship. The word of God for the people of God says, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Of whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even my enemies and my foe, came upon me to eat of my flesh, they stumbled and fell. Though an host shall encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war shall rise against me in this will I be confident. One thing that I desire of the Lord that I will seek after, that I will dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. For in a time of trouble he shall hide me in his pavilion, in the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me. He shall set me upon a rock, and now shall my head be lifted up above my enemies round about me therefore i will offer in this tabernacle sacrifices of joy i will sing yea i will sing praises unto the lord amen somebody yeah. amen the lord is your rock give him a hand clap of praise if god's been good to you give him a hallelujah give him your highest praise if he's been good to you and you love him tell him how you love him mm. amen amen you may be seated as i go to god and pray at this invocation oh lord our lord how excellent is your name in all the earth God, I look around me all the time and I see, God, that you're worthy. I look around, God, and I see your goodness, God. I, I see your hands of completion all in my life when you have made crooked ways straight. God, I thank God for grandchildren calling their grandparents, saying, God, they're on their way. I, I thank God for Thanksgiving being a day of thankfulness. But God, every day is a day of Thanksgiving because, God, you've been good to us. God, thank you for these, your people, God. One by one, I thank you. Thank you for these, your people, God. Two by two, I thank God for our first New Hope Baptist Church, God. I thank you in a mighty way. And God, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. We give you the praise, the glory, and the honor. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen.
morning, each and every one. So Good morning. Blessed to be in the house of the Lord one more time. We ask that you will humble your hearts and your minds and look to the Lord in prayer. Father God in heaven, it's in the precious and holy name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ that we have all assembled here this morning to give you praise and worship, glory and honor. We thank you this morning for all of your many blessings according to your riches and glory. We thank you this morning for our pastor and the first lady and all of my brothers and sisters in the household faith of God this morning. We ask your blessings upon each and every one of us, Lord God. Continue to bless us, use us, lead us, guide us, and direct us in the way that you would have us to go. We ask a special prayer this morning, Lord God, upon the sick and the shut in throughout the land and all of those that are less fortunate than we are today. We pray for the widows and the orphans in the name of Jesus this morning. Special prayer for Sister Mary Minor who has problem with her knee. Special prayer for Sister Carolyn Ware who had surgery on the, just the other day. We pray uh, that you would heal her in a special way, in a mighty way, Lord God. Not only just about her, but touch her heart, mind, soul, and spirit. And we thank you for Dignity's Grace who's looking after Sister Carolyn. We pray this morning, Lord God, that you would continue to bless the youth, continue to bless our college students throughout the land. And I thank God this morning that I had a call from my youngest granddaughter on Friday and it really touched my heart. I haven't talked to her since she went up to California to college. And I thank you, Lord God, for answering the prayer. Mm -hmm. I thank you for keeping us safe and sound, but not only my granddaughter, but each and every one in our church family that have grandchildren that's gone off to college. We pray that you will continue to cover them with your precious blood and be a hedge of protection around them. Mm -hmm. We pray, Lord God, that you would bless those that are in the hospitals and nursing homes throughout the land. We pray and thank you, Lord God, this morning for blessings of those who that was uh, in Atlanta for the justice that was done there. And we pray that you would continue to Bless America and have mercy upon America. Forgive America for her sins, transgressions, and iniquities. And Father God, we ask your blessing upon our pastor this morning. Thank you for blessing him to see 62 years. Amen. Lord God, we pray that you will continue to bless him with a special anointing of your Holy Spirit to preach, to teach, lead, guide, and direct us. And thus says the Lord God Almighty. We mm -hmm. thank you for... First Lady, Yvonne Reed, we pray that you will continue to bless her and use her and bless their families and their grandchildren. We pray this morning, Lord God, that you would just keep us in your will and in your way. And we've done all we've been assigned to do. We ask that you would point our souls to the rest of the place in that kingdom, where every day will be Sunday and the Sabbath will have no end. These and all of the blessings we ask in Jesus' name we pray. Jesus amen, 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 and amen. amen.
I, I wanted to, I said first of all, and I wanted to be clear, I thank God for the growth I've seen in Trustee Jackson. I got to be honest with you. He's, he looks the same on the outside, but I've seen his heart and how he's changed in the three years I've been around that man. So I thank God for changing and molding you and still letting you learn from the men's ministry and just being obedient to God. So I thank God for how he's changing you for the better, Trustee Jackson. Amen. I wanted to say that because we, we don't sometimes tell somebody, he wouldn't do that two, three years ago. He, 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 but he is growing. I hear it in the men's ministry. I, I, your daughter even talks about how you're growing. You know what? When your children see how you're growing, you, you, you're making a step. Because they could talk about you now. But when they're talking about how you're growing in Christ, man, you're, you're doing a powerful witness for the Lord. So I thank God for that. And, and I also want to say to each one of you that we are not perfect, but we serve a perfect God. I say that because the devil is going to try to do everything he can to make us fumble and do things. But I'm still going to serve him. I, I, I was telling Sunday school this morning, I don't serve him for people. I serve him because I made a commitment to God to serve him. I would serve him till I die. And so I'm going to keep on serving him. And I don't know what you're going to do, but I'm going to serve the Lord and give him my very best every day. Whether I'm in the pulpit or whether I'm at home or whether I'm on the job, I still got to give him my best. Amen. Bow with me for a word of prayer as we go to the, to, to the word of God in this preaching moment. Father, we thank you right now. We can't beat you given no matter how we try, God. We thank you right now, God, because you are still our father and we're still your children. God, we're not perfect, but we're trying to be better than we were yesterday, God. God, we're not perfect, but when we look back over our life, God, and see where you brought us from, God, we know that it had to be your hand of mercy over us because we could not be this traveling this far by ourselves. God, we're not perfect, but we are grateful today that you are perfect, God. You gave us your darling son for you loved the world so much that you died on a cross for us, for each one of us individually. Thank you for carrying my sin, for bearing my pain, for being whipped for me, God. Thank you, God, for just being the, the, the sacrificial lamb that came through 42 generations to serve and to die. And God, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this moment. We thank you for this minute and even this second. But we know, God, that it's all about you and it's not about us. So, God, come into the service. Let this word get into our heart and let us learn more, God, to be more like Timothy as we speak on Timothy from his mentor, Paul, today. Amen. Amen. And amen. We acknowledge this great church, the leaders of the church. We acknowledge each one of you, my brothers and sisters in Christ. We acknowledge my, my wife, lovely Yvonne. We, we thank God for her today. She didn't have to work today, so I thank God for that. Mm. You don't know how lonely it gets when you're traveling 48 miles by yourself. Amen. But I thank God for, for allowing her to be with me today. Amen. Today there is a word from a living Savior, and it's coming from the book of Timothy. 2 Timothy is where you will find it. The first chapter, and in the first chapter, you're going to find these words, the 6th through the 7th. 6th through 7th. When you find it, please rest on your feet as we give reverence to the Word of God. 2 Timothy, the first chapter, the 6th through 7th, says these words to the people of God. Wherefore, I put thee in remembrance that thou stir up the gift of God, which is in thee by the putting on of my hands. For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, 
but of power, of love, and of a sound mind. You may be seated. Amen. You may be seated. And if I could use for a subject today, the gifts in you, wake it up. The gifts in you, wake it up. My brothers and sisters, this is not going to be a shouting message because I'm getting in an opportunity to preach about something that we need to do as we go into the gifts of God in the house and how we're going to use it over the next few years to as we, we, we move into it and through the training we will get soon. But I wanted to take time before we go into the Christmas message to speak on the gift that's in each and every one of us in this house. We all have a gift of God. We all have at least one gift. Many of us have two or three, but some of us have one. And if you're saved and you've been bought with a price, you have a gift that God gave you, and you'll see that in a second. My brothers and sisters, I believe Christians would do more for the Lord but one of the problems that they have today that Timothy was receiving from Paul is they're afraid of some things. They're fearful. People are afraid to testify sometimes. They're afraid to witness sometimes. They forget sometimes to give God the word of the praise on just the little things sometimes. I found out that some people are really bold long as they're in church. But when they get out there where the devil is playing, they, 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 they go into a shrinking violet. I believe that if God gave you the Holy Ghost when you got saved and it came into you, you should have some holy boldness serving God. Can I, can I say it this way this morning, my brothers and sisters? Don't let the fear of people or things cause you to not do what God has called you to do. The Bible says in the text, God has not given you the spirit of fear, but of power, of love, and a sound mind. And I believe even David said in Psalms 27 and 1 that I just read when we opened up the church that the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Whom shall I be afraid? We should rely not on our own strength because we're going to get tired. We're going to get weak sometimes. We get sleepy. But we should depend on the strength that God gives us. We have to stir up the gifts, my brothers and sisters. You got to stir up the gift that God gave you. Some of us have a gift and others, like I said, have two or three gifts. Some have the gift to preach and to teach. Some have the gift of hospitality. Some can speak in tongues and some can sing well. So if God called you to advance his kingdom here at this branch of Zion, we got to stop doing other things and remind ourselves to get into the gifts that he calls us and work while it's day. For the night cometh when no man or woman can work. Wake it up. Wake up the gift that you have. And in our text today, Paul's life is fleeting. He is speaking encouraging words to Timothy. Even while he's in prison and jail, he is not letting it stop him from speaking to his mentee about the gift that he has and God has work for you to do. The letter doesn't mention the fact that Paul is in prison, but it does mention that Paul is grateful for all he's been through. Anybody here been through anything lately that caused you to realize you're just grateful for the little things that you have? Grateful that he did wake you up. 
Grateful that you, you do have a reasonable portion of health and strength. Grateful because you, you have a job or you have a check coming in. And you know what? God made it all possible along the way. You're, he was grateful because he has the ability to still serve God and write letters while he's in prison. Paul had the invictus spirit is what I call it, Deacon White. I don't know if y'all ever remember that poem that they read in school, but it, it came to me when I was doing this sermon by William Ernest Henley. The Invictus poem said the kind of spirit that, that you got to think about. William Henry had lost one leg. He was in the hospital when he lost his second leg before he wrote this poem. But he looked around and he seen people much worse than he had. And, 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 and then he started to pin, because there was nothing wrong with his hands, there was stuff wrong with his legs, so he started to pin these words. And he said these words in a poem that made me think about this letter Paul wrote to Timothy. He said, out of the night that covers me, Black as a pit from pole to pole. I think whatever God may be for my unquenchable soul. In the fell clutch of circumstance. I have not winch nor cry aloud. Under the bulging leaf of chance. My head is bloody and unbowed, unbowed. Below or upon this place of wrath, tears loom but a horror of the shade. And yet the menace of years find and shall find me afraid. It matters not how straight the gate, how charged the punishment of scroll. I am the master of my faith. I am the captain of my soul. You see, it was a disease that took his legs. But it didn't take his mind or his hands. And he said, you know, when I look around and see how people got it worse, I thank God that he still has me driving on. The scripture today mentions, when you read it, that they're going to mention the names of people like the grandmother named Lois, the mother named Ernest, and Timothy. It's important for us to know that God spreads the word through his family, through each and every one of us. And that's why I'm glad that Jessica was telling me about her dad when I talked to her. I, I, I'm glad that, 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 that Mother Ware talks to me about her children and her children talk to me about their dad and mom. The word has been spread through the family and that's how it keeps people in love with God because they see how God had blessed you and how he can bless me. It's important for us to know that the word of God spreads through the family. As the word is passed down from generation to generation, we must instill it now more than ever before. It's important for us to understand that God loves individuals, but he also loves the branch of Zion, the church. Our lifestyle of faith got to be every day, my brothers and sisters. We cannot pick up and say we just have a faith that's a Sunday morning type of church faith. We've got to pick up and know that our church faith has got to be when you walk out these doors and you see people that they know you've had time with God. It's got to be a lifestyle every day that you live because they may not know God, but they do know you. Paul is showing Timothy that his faith that he has through his, his mother Ernest and through his grandmother Lois is his faith as well. In the text today, Paul writes the letter while in jail to Timothy, a free man, and there's tension in the text, Sister Joyce. There's tension in the text because Timothy is challenged on why Paul, who has never done anything wrong but loved Jesus, is in jail. Why is he in jail when he broke no laws? But they did not like him because he wrote about the one who could save everybody and it wasn't who they thought. You see, Paul is speaking to Timothy in 2 Timothy 6 where he says these words again. Wherefore I put thee in remembrance that thou stir up the gift of God 
which is in thee by the putting of my hands. In other words, Timothy, I'm going to remind you, I touched you before. I want to remind you, God, that, that Timothy, that, that Paul is saying to him that you got something special in you that God's going to use in the future, but you've got to let it stir up. You see, it lets us know that like that old furnace that's on the side, you got to got to hit that pilot light. And then you got to fan that flame to get some hot water every now and then. Paul is telling him also like this in Acts 2 and 38 where he says that, that Peter says these words, repent and be baptized everyone in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sin and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Therefore everyone that, that has at least one gift, you have at least the Holy Ghost in you if you're saved. Am I right about it? That's, that's at least one gift you got is you've got something that's going to guide you when you don't know which way to go you have something that will lead you when you don't know which way path to follow and if you just trust that Holy Spirit it will lead you right if you trust him so we know we have at least one gift everybody here has the Holy Ghost in them because they're saved but I have three points out of these two scriptures and then I'll be out your way look at that first verse verse 6 and you'll see each believer has that gift, one gift. Wherefore, I put in remembrance of thee, and I stir up the gift of God, which is in thee by the putting of your hands. He anointed him when he touched him. He is not talking about the Christmas gift that you're going to get on the 25th. He's not talking about a physical gift, but a spiritual gift, my brothers and sisters. And God, through his grace and his mercy, has given us that one gift. The gift that we're talking about in the spirit is to be used for spiritual nourishment. Not for those who are not believers, but for the body of Christ. They are to make the body of Christ complete. My gift may not be your gift. Your gift may not be my gift, but when we all use it in conjunction with Jesus Christ, the house becomes stronger because, like I preached a few weeks ago, the ligaments are all connected together and it makes the body strong because we're using the gifts that God gave you. You might not want to look at this, but that assessment that we're going to do it's going to be good for us to know what areas you have flourishing in your life and maybe dormant because we haven't used you in those capacity. Each member of First New Hope needs to know what spiritual gifts they have in the kingdom so they're not doing busy work, but they're doing the work of the Lord, which is kingdom work. The word of God says that every one of us has that one gift being the Holy Spirit. But let's go through this a little bit clearer. Romans 12, 5 through 8. If you write that down, you'll find that, that there's also other gifts. So we being many are one body in Christ. And every one member one of another. Having then gifts different according to the grace that is given to us. Whether prophecy, let us prophesy according to the proportions of our faith. Or ministry. Let us wait on the ministering, or on teaching, on teaching, or on exalting, on exaltation. He that giveth them, let him do it in simplicity. He that shows mercy and with cheerfulness. You notice there were different gifts in there, but it said one body working together. Ephesians, Deacon Thompson 4 and 11 through 12 says, And he gave some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers. But he gave us those positions for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. He didn't give it to you because you look good or you're so smart. He didn't give it to you because you wanted that. He gave it to you because he needed that in the body of the building, of the people. You see, that treasure has nothing to do with how old you are. 
It has nothing to do with what gender you are. It has nothing to do with if you are a young man or a young lady. It has everything to do with what God gave you. So God know what he gave you. You just got to stir it up and start working in that part of your gifting. Uh, if you're a believer, you have a gift. The gifts in the room. Again, it's for the church to be edified, for the church to be fed by teaching, exalted by exaltation, and encouraged to move forward. You see, it's some people, they, they come and they just sit. It's okay to sit for a while, but know what you need to do so you can get up and start working. It's all right to sit. I like to know where I'm supposed to sit, but the same seat got your butt print on it every week is not what you need. You need to learn to move around, and, and maybe God's got you right now where you can be a teacher or a choir member or an usher or even in the sound booth or maybe preaching in my position. I don't mind. If you're called, I'll let you come up. Will I not do it, Minister Carter? Amen. The deacons, I told them I'll share. Amen. It's not about me. It's all about his church. And when you separate yourself from being in charge to being under God, everything starts to flow. Amen. You see, it's just like we're, we're in football season, right, Deacon White? All right, now, you, you like to play defense, and so you like those, that, 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 that X. I like offense, because I'm a Minnesota Viking fan, so I like to move the ball down the field. That's the O. You see, when you start looking at who's the O and who's the X, they're not interchangeable, are they? There's, not, there's only one play called the Wildcat that the quarterback is not in the place of the quarterback. A wide receiver is there. But most of the time, that wide receiver is going to stay over there and the quarterback is going to be the quarterback. The defensive end is not going to always be the one playing pre-safety because he'll get burned. But every now and then, you've got to know your position and trust your teammates. I trust that the deacons and the deaconess will do their job. That's why we've been doing some training. I trust that if you just let the ushers usher, they're going to be all right. They'll lead and make sure it's order in the house. But you got to put everybody in the right place so the team can function. You see... That's why I said, sometimes you got to fan that flame that starts in that little pilot light. Sometimes you got to turn up the heat so that you can get some hot running water. You got to sometimes, when you start running the dryer and all that stuff, you got to fan it even more so you get more heat out of it. You know, it's, it's all about the body of Christ. When we think about we are his hands, we are his feet, we are his mouth and his mind, then we know that he's got a place and job for us all to do. You can be the hands. You can be the feet. I can be the mouthpiece. But we all can be the ears and listen. Let me, let me say it this way. When people see First New Hope Baptist Church, they see the bricks on the outside. They see the mortar that holds those bricks together. They see the lights on on the inside or on the outside when it's dark. They see the walls when they come in. But when they come inside, they shouldn't be looking at inanimate objects. They should be looking at you, the people of God. They should see how you have love on your heart. And how you have a, a, a kindred spirit of just uh, inviting spirit to love people. No longer does any one person have to do all the work, Brother Henry. We can all work together. We can all share in the joy of the Lord as things are happening like feeding the homeless. Or feeding widows or, or giving gift cards. We can all share because we talked about it and we prayed about it and people moved on it. And it's not my idea. It's your idea going with my idea. One church moving forward. That's what God wants. It's not the pastor's way or it's not the way. Oh no. The pastor's not the only one with a brain. You've got good minds. You know each other. You've known people for years that I don't know. You know how they think and they don't think. And I've got to trust you through some things to work with you through some things. That's why I know it's our job, not my job. You see, Paul is telling Timothy, wake up that gift. 
and turn up that flame. Yes. And it's interesting, 2,000 years ago, he said that to them, and I'm saying the same thing to you. Amen. Wake up that gift and turn up that flame. Yes. You see, each of us are believers with one gift. But secondly, he tells us, don't be afraid. Amen. Don't be afraid, Michael. You might be by yourself, but God is with you. Don't be afraid. Physically, you're by yourself, but spiritually, you got the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. You got the majority. Amen. Don't be afraid if you walk into a church and there's nobody here. Fall on your knees and pray and tell God, I, I know God. I don't know when. I don't know how, but I trust in you, God. Like John D. Key said, it's me, O oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. Not my mother, not my father, not not my sister or my brother. It's me, oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. You see, it says God has not given you the spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. Anybody here with me today that's not afraid to carry out the bloodstained banner of God? Oh, I just need a few hands to say I'm with you because I'm with God. And if God is with us, who can be against us? No weapon formed against us will prosper. Mm. We're going to come up against some things. There's going to be some things we don't like happen to us. But don't be afraid. God has kept us for 150 years. And he's not tired yet. Don't you know? The Bible speaks about two types of fear, Deacon Rodas. The first fear that the Bible speaks about is people are scared. That's not the fear in the Bible, though. That's just a, a worldly act, emotion. They're fear because they think they don't qualify for a job, so they don't put in for it. They're, they're afraid to tell somebody that, that you're not all that in a bag of chips because they think I'm beneath them, so I shouldn't say that to them. That's the kind of fear that the Spirit will overcome you if you let it. I, I, I don't know about that because my mind is made up, my heart is fixed. That if I am with God, I can do all things but fail. You see, I can't use that gift in this church. Because whether you like it or not, whether you speak well or not, whether you read well or not, God has shown examples in the past of how he can use anybody to save anybody. Moses couldn't speak well. He stuttered. Yes. But he said, okay, that's all right. I'll let your brother Aaron speak for you. Amen. You see, God didn't tell him not to. He said he was afraid, but he said, I, in spite of your fear, I'm going to still use you to accomplish a task. You see, that's the kind of emotion that comes out when we're afraid. But the kind the Bible speaks about is the kind of fear that comes in the form of reverence. You know that? Proverbs 9 and 10 says, The fear of the Lord is upon the wisdom, and knowledge of his holy is understanding. This means you submit and you give reverence to the Most High God. It is in proper perspective that both God's wrath and his anger is real. See, you, you got to understand something. He doesn't want you to fear him because you're scared of him. He wants you to fear him because you respect him and what he's done for you. You know, he's, he wants you to fear him because when you didn't know what to do, he had it. He was opening doors for you. When you didn't know which way to go, he was closing doors behind and opening doors in front. It is proper for you to respect God and his, his wrath and his anger, but you need to respect him even more for his love. Paul is telling Timothy that God that you serve didn't give you that spirit of fear. But a power look don't even worry Timothy if they say you're too young that's all right they've been young once too but but God he said I'm gonna be with you Timothy even to the end you see first John 4 and 18 says there is no fear in love but perfect love casts out fear 
because fear had torment. He that feareth is not made perfect in love. Isaiah followed that up by 41 and 10 that says, Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy Lord. I will strengthen thee, yea, I will help thee, yea, I will uplift thee with thy right hand of my righteousness. Throughout the whole Bible, God is telling us to trust him and don't be afraid. You even see in believers when the storm of life are raging, that's when you know if they really trust God or not. When the wind is blowing its strongest, will you hold on or will you let go? But it's when they hold on to his unchanging hand that they see that the storm is passing over. God never said you weren't going to have trials and tribulations. He just said he'll give you the strength to overcome those trials and tribulations. That's why we can cast all our cares upon him for he cares for us. So we see each believer has a gift. Amen. But second, he says, don't be afraid. But third, he wants us to know that he has been gracious to us. Amen. That's what verse 7 says. Let me remind you of this today, my brothers and sisters, in the book of Genesis. To the book of Revelation. God has given through that entire thing, the entire Bible grace he did not hold back but he continued to give grace when you didn't act right he didn't hold back when you wanted to smile in his face and spit on spit in his face and turn your back to him he didn't turn away from you he still offered grace because he gave you jesus christ John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. The Holy Spirit actually fuses power in the life of every believer when you get saved to where you have power that's untapped. You just got to tap into that power and use it for the Lord. The power is given when you start ministering to others. It brings back things that you've forgotten so that you can tell others that God brought you through. It's power when you start to live right and act right and you don't know how you change but God did something to you that made you get a heart and he started molding you and shaping you to the way he wanted you to be. That's when you start seeing people that look the same, but they act different. Power changed them. Now, we're at the point that we began to live and proclaim Christ to others. It's the power that we can have the strain of difficulties in our lives that we realize that we can walk tall and we can witness to a world that God still saves. Regardless to the location you may be, you can tell others that God is a gracious God. Why do you know that? Because when you was on your knees crying, he still wiped your tears. Why do you know that when you had problems in your marriage, God brought you through your marriage? Why do you know that when your children didn't act right, God didn't let you beat them down, he let you talk to them and talk some sense into them? You see, it's not about us, but it's the God that we're connected to that makes us want to do right when we want to do wrong. Regardless to where you're at, his grace has kept you. The power lets you know that when you was weak, God made you strong. Genesis 1 and 26 gives an example that God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the seas and over the birds of the heavens and over the livestock and over all earth and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth you might not understand this but he gave you dominion to rule over animals he gave you dominion to to let the, the, the animals see you and go the opposite way because there's power in you and he said that to Adam, and he's saying that to us. 
But you got to wake up the gift that's in you. You got to know that that it's not because you 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 working for the man and you're tired. But God gave you the job to work for the man. You can't give up on God because you're tired because he didn't give up on you when you was filthy rags. And he had to pick you up out of the Maori muck and clay and turn you around. He didn't give up on you. you. Don't give up on him. Paul is telling you that the spirit of love, that's that agape love. That agape love that regardless of what you're going through, he still loves you so much. That he made you his son and his daughter. It's the kind of love that rests in God. Paul is talking about the spiritual love that will make your enemies your footstool. And you don't even curse them out anymore. You just pray for them. That's a powerful love there. You slap me on one side. You're not going to get on the other. I, I haven't I haven't been changed that well yet. But I will tell you that I, st- I learned that I got to pray for people. But somebody talk about me. You know what? Words hurt. Yes. But that's all right. I can get over those words. Yeah. It's in God that he gives you agape love. That's why he gave you the power and love and a sound mind to make sound decisions. Yeah. We can take the high road. That's what Michelle Obama said. When they go low, we go high. Yeah. You got to know some of these things don't make sense until you get a little bit of age and wisdom underneath you. That's that's smart because you could know that they may get you a little while. But if you're taking the high road, sooner or later, they're going to see that they're they're dirt and they're scum and they've done you wrong. Mm -hmm. A sound mind means that you know that God gave you a right mind. That means you got some control. Mm -hmm. That means you have the ability to take your emotions And not let it take over you. So first we see each of us have the gift of the Holy Spirit. So you can't say you don't have a gift. But secondly, don't be afraid of it with the gift you have. Work for the kingdom. We all can get a turn. Put your hands to the plow and let's plow together. And third, God has been gracious to you. You, you, you don't have to look in the mirror to know it. You can think about his goodness and all he's done for you, and you know he's been gracious. So as I come to a close today, I'm not going to give any shout, but I want to give a challenge today. I want to challenge you that when you find your gift, will you work in your gift for this church? Will you, when you find, I, I heard a few, amen. But when you find out what's your gift, if you don't know what your gift is, you'll know on the 11th, but you might know right now. COVID for us is still going to be here. It's not going nowhere. But the church is not going nowhere either. Will you get up on your feet and get in your gifting and give God your best? Because God needs to let you know that he needs you to represent him at the door of the church. He needs you to represent him in the office counting the money. And, and, and he even needs to represent him as you look at the sound booth. He needs you to work for him. He's been working for you. Why can't you work for him? As the people of God needs a blessing. They need you. But only you can do it because you've got that gift. The good news is Paul wanted Timothy not to be ashamed. And I think about it all the time. My wife and I have discussions all the time about this. We can go everywhere. We can eat anywhere. But yet we can't come to church. There's something wrong with that church. We got to be real about it. You, you, you can't tell me you love the Lord. You heard his cry. But yet you can serve him. How is it that the world can say it's okay when we got an air filter that purifying the air right now up there? So this place is a bubble. Amen. We clean it from the front to the back. We got markers coming in. We got masks on except for me right now. And you don't think it's not cleaner here than at Walmart? Amen. Come on, somebody. Amen. Let's be real about the God we serve today. Amen. God did not give you the spirit of fear but of sound mind. You got to know that's stupid. If you can think that you can, you cannot just choose them when you want to and don't choose them when you don't want to. God is not an on-off God. He's an on-time God. Yes, he is. 
is. He doesn't need you when you think he needs you. You got to need him 24-7 because he did wake you up. He did watch over your bedside last night. He did protect you all night long. And for a God like that, you need to serve him in spirit and in truth. So I close this message today with a challenge. I'm giving you time. But on the 11th, you should know your gift. That's why I need you to fill that out. And when you get your gift, you should look yourself in the mirror. Yes. And you should say to yourself, God, I've been neglecting you. And I'm ready to serve you. We need to have more people tell the truth and not live a life of a lie. I'm going to be here. I'm teaching every Wednesday night. I'm, I'm Bible study. I'm doing what you asked me to do. But I can't do it by myself. I can't do it by myself. I need you. If I'm your pastor and you love me, then show me love and learn the word of God. Because people are learning in Bible study. They're learning in Sunday school. And you know what? You weren't learning before. That's the truth. That's the truth. And I'll stand on the truth all day. So as we're standing all over the building, this was not a word to make you shout. It's a word to get your attention. And I need you to know that if we can go eat all over the place, if we can go with our children to school and the schools are back open, then we can be at church. We can love the Lord and we can serve the Lord. Let us pray. Father, thank you for that word, God. It's not one that I always wanted to give. It's not one that I, 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 I've been waiting to give. But it's a word that you told me to give. And God, I give you all praises today for knowing that from the pulpit is not just a place to give a word of comfort, but it's also to convict hearts. So convict the hearts of your people, God, either online or in this building. Convict them, God, that you didn't turn away from them, that now they need to turn back to you. And God, as we go into this season of Christmas holiday, Thanksgiving is over and Christmas is coming, but what gift can we give you back? Nothing else that we can give but ourselves, God. So God, right now, touch us in a mighty way so that we can be more faithful and more obedient to you. We give you the praise, the glory, and the honor, God, for the ones who are here. We give you the praise, glory, and honor for those who are online, who will see it, God. And God, we ask this and we do it in remembrance of you. Like you did for Timothy, you'll do it for us. So stir up the gift, God. Stir up the gift, God, so we can work for you. We can love better. We can serve better. We can be better. And we give you the praise, the glory, and the honor, God, for every member of this church, whether on a roll, at home, or in the place. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. You, we're, we're going to give a benediction, let you give your offerings, and we're going to... Well, it's time for us to look at our stewardship. It's time for us to look at our hearts as God has blessed us to give back a portion of what he's already given to us. And here at First New Hope, we would ask that if you're visiting online and you don't have a local church, please give to our church. If you have a church of your own, we would ask you to give to that church. You can give here at First New Hope by just going on Facebook and going to our account, www.firstnewhopebaptist.com. You'll be able to find our website. You click the menu, go to the Give button, and it will be easy. It'll take you right through it where you'll be able to put in your amount, take it to the cash register, and it will pull out and you will get a receipt uh, that will allow you to see your donation that you gave to the church, your offering. If you want to mail it, you can as well. 
You can mail it to First New Hope Baptist Church, Post Office Box 356, Spotsylvania, Virginia, 22553. We will take it and we will record it and we will make sure that at the end of the year, if you've given over a certain amount, which we will, um, as our members know, we will give you a receipt so you can file that as well for your taxes. And so giving is part of God's plan. He says, give and it will be given to you. Press down, shaking together and running over. But you got to first give so then you can give in return. So it's the principle of God's word. The stewardship is what he expects from us. Be blessed and give in Jesus' name. Amen.